Uh, welcome back to Fertility Factor Fiction, the best weekly show on the web where we discuss a hot topic, reveal all the truths, dispel all the myths, and then answer all your questions live. So thank you for joining us again. And uh, we've got a great topic tonight, which is really interesting for me because I'm not a believer in PGT for everyone. And this was a, an amazing study looking at whether or not you could predict embryo survival and live birth from just the characteristics of the embryo in a very large number of uh, cycles and embryos. So very interesting study and really uh, interesting for us to have a look at. Um, so uh, hopefully everybody's just jumping back on and uh, we'll have a chance to review everything. Tarek's heart rate's going to slow back down to normal again <laughs> and we can go from there. So I hope you've all been doing well. Um, by now, many of you have probably been getting vaccinated. Some of you may have heard that the AstraZeneca virus is being kind of put on hold in some countries because out of 17 million doses, three people had uh, blood clots. Um, so I think that that's a little bit of an odd thing to stop an entire vaccine from being used for. Uh, the background rate of having a spontaneous blood clot is higher than 3 in 17 million. So it is unlikely that those are related to the vaccine. Nevertheless, um, who knows? They're going to see what happens with those. I should correct something I said in the last show, which I did not know about, but I've subsequently learned. So I had heard earlier that the AstraZeneca virus was actually either a live attenuated or a killed form of the virus itself. It is not. It is a C DNA virus, which means complementary DNA built from the RNA of the spike protein. And it actually goes into the nucleus of your cell in order to teach your cell to produce the RNA that then produces the protein, which then your immune system responds to. So it is actually quite different from the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines. Um, and no one really knows what the long-term effects of this cDNA virus are. So while I am totally an avid supporter of the Moderna and the Pfizer, we don't know enough yet about the AstraZeneca. Um, so it should be interesting to find out where the data from that goes, but nobody knows for sure yet. So, uh, okay, so we'll get started on our show now. So the question was, um, which pre-vitrification parameters are the most predictive of survival and live birth in vitrified, warmed blastocyst transfer cycles? So uh, let's just talk about what that title means. So they wanted to look at which parameters of your embryo are important prior to the freezing of the embryo exclusively using vitrification. Now, most centers should be using vitrification because it's far safer and has much better results than slow freezing. Um, but they have to use pre-vitrification or vitrification. And then they wanted to look at which of those parameters could predict survival of the embryo from the thaw and then live birth after implantation. And so uh, this is a study from IVI, which is that great big group we've mentioned before on the show in Spain. And they have a huge, huge program there. So the study included 11,936 embryos. And they didn't do PGT on any of these particular cycles. So these are all factors that are going to predict the outcome without having the PGT, which is important because for those of us that don't believe in doing PGT for young patients, you still want to be able to give them advice and guidance as to what the chances are without necessarily having the PGT in place. So the things they looked at were the day of vitrification, and it had to be day five or day six. They did not use any day sevens. They looked at the degree of blastocyst expansion. We're going to pop up a picture for you. Can you do that image? Do you have that? I have that. <laughs> so we'll show you an image, which um, if you look from A to B to C to D, you'll see uh, differences in the embryo. So the first one is just the blastocyst. The next one is an expanded blastocyst. The next one is a hatching blastocyst, meaning part of it is coming out of its... Uh, shell, and then the last one is an actually hatched blastocyst. Is it up there? A, yeah, ABCD. A, so uh, they looked at that, and then they looked at the uh, trophectoderm, which is the portion of the embryo that is becoming the placenta, versus the inner cell mass, which is the portion of the embryo that's becoming the actual baby. Um, and they compared all of that looking at survival, 
uh, clinical pregnancy rate, and then live birth rates. So <clears throat> they did this using something called a stepwise multivariate regression. And with that, they were able to look at which factors after controlling for all of the confounding variables actually contributed and to what degree did they contribute. So we're gonna change now to table one, just to kind of get a rough idea of this study, to kind of give you some ideas of the numbers. Have you got that up? Okay, so you can see that the total number of cycles was 9,970, and that was 11,936 blastocysts that they actually warmed. 9,306 were day five blastocysts, and 2,083 were the day six blastocysts. So pretty significant numbers there. This, this is a large study. You're gonna get lots of robust data from this. Survival rate, very reassuring for all of you out there, 94.3 um, overall, which was 95.3 on day five. And it does appear that there's a fairly significant decrease of about 6% when you go from a day five to a day six. So this is an important factor for those of you that are freezing day six embryos. It's kind of critical to recognize your success rate just even in the thaw may not be as high as it would be if it's a day five embryo. So the next thing that they looked at was just kind of, that's important at least for us to discuss is the percentages. So when you look at implantation rate per transferred embryo, overall it was 46%, which is really quite good. 50.6 in the day five, but only 31.4 in the day sixes. So a big, big difference in that p-value of less than 0.001 means that it is very, very statistically significant. When you look at clinical pregnancy rate, it's 50.6 versus 32.6. Ongoing pregnancy rate was 40 point, uh, sorry, 43.1 versus 25.5. So again, a huge difference there. And the live birth rate, 42.4 versus 25. So they are seeing a very significant decrement or decrease in these parameters when you look at this between day five and day six embryos. So one of the factors obviously is which day your embryo is frozen on. Did you freeze it on day five because it had already reached that stage of maturity or did you freeze it on day six? The rates are still quite good, but they're definitely lower with those day sixes. So we're gonna go to table two now to kind of look at the survival parameters, just so you can get an idea of what factors were helpful in predicting the survival of your embryo from the thaw procedure. So we have table two up. <clears throat> okay, so you can see on table two that the day of vitrification, meaning day five or day six for the day they froze your embryo, was important. If you froze on day five compared to day six, you had a 56% increase in the chance that that embryo was gonna survive. So they used day six as the reference and then said that day fives have a much better chance of survival. So that's the first thing they looked at. Second thing they looked at was the degree that the blastocyst had expanded. And what they found was that if you reached the blastocyst stage, survival was 92% higher compared to a hatching blastocyst. Now this is kind of interesting because if your embryo is hatching, it's quite an advanced embryo. But I know my previous embryologist and my new one have both said if the embryo is hatching, you actually are potentially at much more risk when you freeze that embryo because they don't necessarily do as well. And this would appear to be supporting that data because the, the blastocyst that's still not hatching is gonna do much better here, 92% versus the one that's hatching. When they looked at expanded blastocysts, there was a, a number that suggests that it's higher, but it's not statistically significant. And then when they looked at the fully hatched blastocyst, it's actually a huge decrease in success. So if you have embryos that have made it to that stage, you actually need to consider doing either early or freezing so they don't let them go past the expanded stage, or you need to actually consider doing a fresh transfer so that you don't waste that embryo because this is a 59% decrease if you have an expanded blastocyst. And this is from the multivariate model where they've already controlled for all of the possible confounding risk factors. The next thing that they looked at was the trophectoderm grade. So this is the grade of the portion of the embryo 
that's going to become your placenta. So some of you have undoubtedly heard that your embryo is a 3BB or a 3BC or a 4AA. So the 4-3 number is the size or expansion of the embryo. The first letter applies to the grading of the inner cell mass, and the second letter applies to the grading of the trophectoderm. So the higher the grade of the trophectoderm, the higher the chance that your embryo would survive. So with an A grade compared to a C grade, 51% increase. A grade, or sorry, a B grade compared to a C grade, 46% increase. That doesn't mean that your C grade embryo won't survive. It just means that the higher grade embryos have a much better chance of survival than the lower grade embryos do. The rest of the things they looked at, including what the inner cell mass quality looked like, was not actually significant. So that was not an important factor. So then they looked at the live birth on table four. So we're gonna to switch to table four now to analyze what the live birth stats are. So we looked at survival, what predicts live birth? So day five versus day six is almost double the live birth rate, a 96% increase. So almost 100% more chance um, that you would get pregnant if your embryo was frozen and then thawed from day five. So that is really, really valuable data because it definitely tells us what we're looking at. Have you got that one? Give me a sec. That one is coming up. We'll pull it up for you shortly. But the numbers I'm reading to you are right here. So the, the referent is day six. And if you're a day five embryo, you've got a 96% increase in the chances of live birth. When they looked at the degree of blastocyst expansion compared to a hatching blastocyst, the live birth rate in contrast to what we just showed you its survival is actually much higher. So a blastocyst has a 37% decrease, an expanding blastocyst has an 11% decrease. The referent that they used was the hatching blastocyst and that one is sort of neutral. They did not look at the hatched blastocysts in this particular analysis. The other factor that they looked at, which turned out to be quite critical, is the trophectoderm grade. So when you look at the trophectoderm grade, they showed a 98% increase with the grade A's and a 57% increase with the grade B's compared to grade C. So the most important factor here, this actually was the most predictive element of your live birth. So they had more weight in terms of the statistical modeling than any of the other factors. The only other one was day five that was even close to this. So your trophectoderm score, that second letter in your 4AA or 4BC or whatever, is actually looking like it is one of the most important factors to predict your live birth success. When they analyzed the intracellular, uh, or sorry, the inner cell mass to see how predictive that was, it actually was not predictive at all. So in this model, they showed no statistically significant increase. So can we actually use this data to predict your survival and live birth? We actually probably can. This is giving you very valuable studies and, and statistical values that will indicate to you what your chances of survival of your embryo are and what your chances of live birth are in reference to other categories. What's most important? The day that your embryos were vitrified, day, uh, day five versus day six, with day five being more important. The stage that the blastocyst has reached in terms of its expansion and in terms of the trophectoderm score, what score you were assigned before they froze your embryo, because that's critical when it comes to whether your embryo will result in a live birth and also whether or not it'll survive. So thank you for joining us for this part of the show. Fact or fiction demonstrates it is a fact. You can predict based on pre-freezing parameters whether your embryo has a decent chance of survival and live birth without doing PGTA. So this will be up on our YouTube channel shortly. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Push the subscribe button up there, which Tarek will post for you, I'm sure. And that'll be on the videos shortly. And watch all of our other videos. Every show is uh, captured and placed on our YouTube channel so you can catch them all there. So we're going to